Welcome everyone to the Daniel Krugin Associates Wealth Management Review. It's titled, Are We in a Bull Market? Today's agenda, what we're going to be covering is the S&P 500 year to date. The S&P 500 capital weighted versus equal weighted. What is that? And then we're going to talk a minute on the broader picture of the risks and rewards, uh, looking at the markets and the economy moving forward from here. And we will wrap up at the end there. So here we are in June, not April. It That's is right. June. That's right. But uh, <laughs> enjoying the middle of the summer. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get right into this because we're going to we are going to do our best to stay on target today. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 year to date. Um, the first chart here is actually the S&P 500 that everybody sees on TV when they're talking on the financial uh, channels about what did the S&P do. This is the chart that we're looking at and we're uh, representing here. And in here, you can see the green shaded was the S&P was up 7%. Now that was from a market bottom of a negative 26.5. So it ended up the year at negative 19.5. And then you go on to Q1, where again, it was up 7.1%. And then year to date or quarter to date, uh, 2023, up 7.3%. And you know, you look at that and you say, man, we are in a bull market, but it doesn't feel like we're in a bull market. So what's going on? Well, what I'm going to show you on the next chart is the S&P 500 equal weighted. Now, let's look at these returns. In Q4, it was actually up 10.9%. Q1 of 2023, 2.4. Q2 of 2023, year to date, 2.3. And you're like, well, wait a minute, they're both the S&P 500. Why is one look like it's roaring, and the other one's just kind of dragging along. Well, that brings me to a definition here. So when you're looking at the capital market weighted versus equal weighted in the S&P 500, there is a distinct difference. So the capital weighted really is the most reported index measurement, and that's gonna hold true with most indexes out there. It's where the larger companies represent a larger percentage of the index versus the smaller companies in the S&P 500. So you got 500 stocks, but you might have, let's say Apple is weighted at 7%, and then you might have this obscure small company that just came into the S&P that maybe it only has a half a percent. So it's not equally weighted based on the capital that's put, uh, let, let me put it this way, based on the mega size of the company, it could have a much larger weight in the S&P 500. Now, you look at that definition as opposed to the equal weighted S&P 500, and this is an alternative method, but it gives you a better understanding of how the broader market is doing. And this is where all companies are weighted the same percentage within that index. So Apple might be at 1% and that obscure company might also be at 1%. Uh, so it equally weights every stock within the S&P 500. And it is good to note that, uh, you know, from a traditional diversification and asset allocation models, when you're looking at it from how the average person invests, uh, they tend to weight companies more equally to mitigate the risk due to overexposure from individual stocks or sectors. And when you think about the capital weighted S&P 500, it is overweighted by the tech companies. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So now this chart, this chart really represents and kind of points out that the broader market just is not rallying like the tech portion of the market is. So the S&P 500 on this chart, it's year-to-date performance up to 615. The S&P 500, the bar on the left, is effectively showing you that it's up 13.2% year-to-date. If you took out the seven tech titans, these are tech companies, 
from the S&P 500, the S&P 500 will only be up 4.8%. Well, that's a pretty big difference there. And to take it a step further, if you look at the Russell 2000, which is small cap stocks, it's only up 6.5, so about half of what the S&P capital weighted is. Then you look at the Russell mid cap, it's only up 2.4. So you can see the broader market is not really participating in what looks like a bull market for the S&P capital weighted index. Now, let's look at it a different way. And, and this is a real interesting fact here, and this is something most people don't understand, but year to date, 88% of the S&P 500 gains are coming from Alphabet, which is Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, which is Facebook, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. And another uh, fact that a lot of people don't understand is those seven companies represent about 25% of the S&P 500 from a capital weighted standpoint. So you can see in this chart for Q1 and Q2, the S&P standard weighting is showing 14.4% up with the S&P equal weighting only four. And just to throw in bonds there, bonds are only up 1.4%. So there is a significant slant right now in the S&P 500 from a return standpoint. But there's also, you know, when you think about it, Rocky, there's also a significant risk factor now that's in the S&P 500 equal weighted or capital weighted, whereby it's not in the equal weighted. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. The converse of what you said is 493 companies of the 500 aren't performing as well as it looks yeah. like when you look at the index. Yeah, it's, so. it, is, it is quite amazing. I'm going to pass it over to you so you can keep the ball rolling here. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's something. I mean, it's something that, that needed to be pointed out, I think. Right. So now I want to talk a little bit about going to a little bit broader picture of where we're at. What are the risks and reward potential moving ahead the second half of this year? And if you've been with us any length of time, you've seen our leading economic indicator chart where we're tracking 20 of the biggest uh, economic and financial indicators out there. And for a long time now, for about a year, we've been in a yellow, red, kind of uh, declining market. And uh, that is continuing into this year. So even though we're seeing some recovery led by the big tech titans, the overall broad market is still suffering from what's going on in the economy. And this is showing us that we don't see any huge change so far this year and what to expect moving forward. A couple of bright spots, though, that we actually have, though, is recently we've seen interest rates. Actually, everything the Fed's been doing to raise interest rates and to control inflation um, is taking its impact and it is slowing inflation. You know, if you remember, our peak for inflation uh, last year was a little over 9%. And they've about cut that in half now. So we've got inflation down around 4%. We're not all the way to the Fed number of two, two and a half, but, you know, we're significantly better than we were a year ago or nine months ago. And we also have seen a little bit of movement in Washington with the political environment that there's a little bit more cooperation between the House, Senate, and the administration. So that can bode well for the economy also. But right now, there's still a lot of risk out there in the general markets with the way that the economic indicators are pointing. Another thing to look at, um, and CNR gives us their tracking of the S&P 500 earnings growth estimates. And what they're projecting is still a lot of opportunity for this downside, for these earnings estimates to go lower, anywhere from three and a half to 5% moving forward. And how that impacts the market overall is if you look at the chart at the bottom where they track how they feel about stock prices. 
are stocks overvalued? Are they fairly priced? Are they attractive or very attractive? They're still seeing with this slowing in the earnings growth estimates, a lot of downside risk. So we could see some more movement in the broad markets where it stays where it's at or it actually starts to retreat a little bit, maybe somewhere in that 5% range here in the next three to six months. So we're watching that. We're using that as a way to kind of gauge, hey, when do we want to be fully invested in the growth of the market? Uh, we're believing that, you know, the economy is going to bottom somewhere around the end of this year. But we're tracking this as to what's the right time to maybe buy in. Where, where are the good prices for that recovery? And we always want to bring it back to the big picture. So finally, we want to show you, when you look at this long term, this is a chart of the historical 20 plus declines in the market. And then subsequently, what happened over one year, five years, and 10 years, represented by the bars here, the, the red bars that are going down below the line that are negative, all the way back to the Great Recession. Uh, that's how far the market went down. The blue represents the next year, the very first year of recovery. The green is a five-year picture, and the purple is a 10-year picture. And you can see historically, you know, the markets recover and they recover well after these market declines. So I also want to point out on this chart, uh, the last two parts of this that kind of showed incomplete charts. And that's because we don't have a five or 10 year since COVID or since last year's decline. But we can have a lot of confidence looking at history that the market will recover as it has in the past, Dan, and continue to recover moving forward. Well, yeah, even the so, one-year return is already showing well compared to historical. So, yep. yeah, I think I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, we're still rather defensive in the portfolios. We're, we're watching the indicators. We'll continue to do that. When we look at our money managers, the money managers are still defensive. Mm -hmm. Even in the most aggressive portfolios, they've got some defensive postures in it. They don't believe that this is over yet. And until they do, they're not going to move forward with a full risk on, and neither will we. So we're, we're keeping an eye on it. That said, you know, Rocky, we've got solutions. We always have solutions for you. And wealth management, properly designed for clients, really hits the five major areas for clients' concerns. And that's investment consulting, wealth enhancement strategies, wealth transfer strategies, wealth protection strategies, and of course, charitable giving strategies. So you take care of your family and... We'll take care of you. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.